you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Secretary. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for always being willing to uh, take uh, our calls when uh, we have important issues to discuss. Uh, I sincerely appreciate that, and although we don't always agree, as you know, uh, it's good to talk and see if we can't find middle ground to get to uh, what usually is a common interest and common objective, and I, I sincerely appreciate that. These days, there's no shortage of complex issues in foreign relations, including Russia's unprovoked war on Ukraine. Ukraine to China's ongoing attempts to coerce and dominate nations across the globe. The American people need a State Department that is fully capable of advancing interests and values of all Americans, and this will only increase in the future as, as China becomes a greater and greater challenge for us. Now, we should all remember that that is the first challenge that we have, even though we have uh, other things going on, like the Ukraine war, which are, are uh, very important to us, but we can do more than one thing at a time. China is still the challenge of the century. The department needs to be efficient and effective with taxpayer dollars and use the authorities provided by Congress. For example, my Global Health Security Act signed into law light last year provided a state with substantial new authorities. The bill created a coordinator for global health security at the department with the power to reduce redundancy, eliminate waste, and ensure unity of effort. Remarkably, the department provided zero funding for the coordinator. Um, I hope you're going to talk about this a little bit today. I suspect you are, since you and I have talked about it at uh, some length previously. Uh, we, also, uh, enact, uh, we also enacted my Secure Embassy Construction and Counterterrorism Act, which allows our diplomats more freedom to leave the embassy and do their job while dramatically reducing the costs of embassies. The authorities provided uh, in SICA should enhance our presence in places like the Pacific Islands, where we are directly competing with Chinese government for, government for influence. Uh, Secretary Blinken, I hope to hear how the department is utilizing these authorities and implementing these laws because I remain concerned. On Russia and its brutal war, I have visited Kyiv and seen firsthand the destruction and uh, resilience of the Ukrainian people, as well as the work the State Department personnel are doing to advance our security. There is clearly more that needs to be done, though. The administration should stop its dithering and follow the lead of allies like Poland and send the F-16s. I don't want to see this administration uh, push for a ceasefire in December because not enough is being provided now. It's important that the help be provided now. Also, while I have consistently advocated for giving Ukraine more of the systems it needs to win, I've also been clear that we must conduct rigorous oversight to ensure that our aid is effective as well as transport uh, transparent and accountable to the American taxpayer. I've had direct conversations with President Zelensky uh, about this, and he knows that we're serious about this. We should increase embassy staffing and enable our diplomats to get out and conduct more oversight of the assistance dollars. Uh, more personnel are needed for uh, end-use monitoring of critical weapon system. And, the United, and Washington needs to stop telling our team in Ukraine when and where they can go to monitor this. There are currently 64, 64 ongoing or planned audits and reports on U.S. assistance in Ukraine, and so far there has been zero evidence of illicit <coughs> weapons transfer or misuse of taxpayer dollars. Turning to the Indo-Pacific, I have long said we need better resourcing. I welcome the Department's request for increased funding. However, I remain concerned this money will be directed towards promoting the Democrat Party's progressive priorities rather than actually countering China which is the primary objective. The Biden administration must tell Congress what all this money is for. Right now, without further details, it looks like slush funds for the administration's desires. On Taiwan, I'm troubled, but not surprised that the budget re uh, request lacks robust security assistance for Taiwan, uh, relegating Taiwan to a sliver of $16 million in total FMF funding is unserious and frankly offensive given the threats emanating from China. Related, uh, relatedly, in the Middle East, it's clear that the administration is failing to compete with China. I just returned from the region, and the administration's policies across the board uh, have uh, created great, great concerns for our partners there. Our partners continually point to an Iran policy that undermines their security, an Afghanistan withdrawal that makes them doubt American commitment, the, this administration's slow embrace of the Abraham Accords and increasingly restrictive arms sales, all evidence, they argue, of a retreating America. It's difficult to persuade the mother lies in, in the face of the evidence. The recent deal between Saudi Arabia, China, and Iran proves 
The U.S. is sitting on the sidelines. Instead of fixing its approach, the administration blames our partners for this outcome. After all, great power competition is global. As a nation that has fought in both Europe and Pacific, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Focusing on China, it's uh, important. I've said for a long, long time, that doesn't mean we turn our backs on the Middle East. Finally, as you've just returned from Africa, I'd like to hear how you plan to deliver on U.S. Co uh, commitments on the continent, including those made at the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit. We can only deliver if we have sufficient personnel and tools to conduct our diplomacy and development effectively. Many issues. I have no doubt you're up to the task of explaining them all to us in detail. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.